Timothy Michael Kane, born February 26, 1958, is an American attorney and politician serving as the junior United States Senator from Virginia since 2013. A member of the Democratic Party, he previously served as the 38th Lieutenant Governor of Virginia from 2002 to 2006 and 70th Governor of Virginia from 2006 to 2010. Kane was his party's nominee for Vice President of the United States in the 2016 election. Born in St. Paul, Minnesota, Kane grew up in Overland Park, Kansas, graduated from the University of Missouri and earned a Juris Doctor degree from Harvard Law School before entering private practice and becoming a lecturer at the University of Richmond School of Law. He was first elected to public office in 1994, when he won a seat on the Richmond City Council. He was then elected mayor of Richmond in 1998 and was in that position until being elected Lieutenant Governor of Virginia in 2001. Kane was elected Governor of Virginia in 2005 and was in that office from 2006 to 2010. He was Chairman of the Democratic National Committee from 2009 to 2011. On July 22, 2016, Hillary Clinton announced that she had selected Kane to be her vice presidential running mate in the 2016 presidential election, and the 2016 Democratic National Convention nominated him on July 27. Despite winning a plurality of the national popular vote, the Clinton-Kane ticket lost the Electoral College, and thus the election, to the Republican ticket of Donald Trump and Mike Pence on November 8, 2016. Kane is a vocal critic of Trump. <laughs> Early life Kane was born at St. Joseph's Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota. He is the eldest of three sons born to Mary Kathleen Nay Burns, a home economics teacher, and Albert Alexander Kane Jr., a welder and the owner of a small iron working shop. He was raised Catholic. One of Kane's great-grandparents was Scottish and the other seven were Irish. Kane's family moved to Overland Park, Kansas, when Kane was two years old, and he grew up in the Kansas City area. In 1976, he graduated from Rockhurst High School, a Jesuit all-boys preparatory school in Kansas City, Missouri. At Rockhurst, Kane joined the debate team and was elected student body president. Kane received his BA in economics from the University of Missouri in 1979, completing his degree in 3 years and graduating summa cum laude. He was a Coro Foundation fellow in Kansas City in 1978. He entered Harvard Law School in 1979, interrupting his law studies after his first year to work in Honduras for nine months from 1980 to 1981, helping Jesuit missionaries who ran a Catholic school in El Progreso. While running a vocational center that taught carpentry and welding, he also helped increase the school's enrollment by recruiting local villagers. Kane is fluent in Spanish as a result of his nine months in Honduras. After returning from Honduras, Kane met his future wife, first year Harvard Law student, Anne Holton. He graduated from Harvard Law School with a JD degree in 1983. Kane and Holton moved to Holton's hometown of Richmond, Virginia, after graduation, and Kane was admitted to the Virginia Bar in 1984. Topic legal career and Richmond City Council After graduating from law school, Kane was a law clerk for Judge R. Lanier Anderson III of the United States Court of Appeals for the Eleventh Circuit, in Macon, Georgia. Kane then joined the Richmond law firm of Little, Parsley and Cluverius, P.C. In 1987, Kane became a director with the law firm of Metsulo and McCandlish. P.C. Kane practiced law in Richmond for 17 years, specializing in fair housing law and representing clients discriminated against on the basis of race or disability. He was a board member of the Virginia Chapter of Housing Opportunities Made Equal, which he represented in a landmark redlining discrimination lawsuit against Nationwide Mutual Insurance Co., arising from the company's practices in Richmond. Kane won a $100.5 million verdict in the case, the judgment was overturned on appeal, and Kane and his colleagues negotiated a $17.5 million settlement. Kane did regular pro bono work. In 1988, Kane started teaching legal ethics as an adjunct professor at the University of Richmond School of Law. Kane taught at the University of Richmond for six years, and his students included future Virginia Attorney General Mark Herring. He was a founding member of the Virginia Coalition to End Homelessness. Kane had a largely apolitical childhood, but became interested in politics in part due to the influence of his wife's family and his experience attending Richmond City Council meetings. 
In 1994, Kane was elected to the City Council of the Independent City of Richmond, as the member from the 2nd District. He took his seat on July 1 and retained the position until September 10, 2011, when he was succeeded by William Pantel. He defeated the incumbent City Councilman Benjamin P. A. Warthen by 97 votes. Kane spent four terms on the City Council, the latter two as Mayor of Richmond. Mayor of Richmond 1998 On July 1, 1998, Kane was elected mayor of Richmond, succeeding Larry Chavis. He was chosen by an 8–1 vote on the majority Black City Council, becoming the city's first white mayor in more than ten years, which was viewed as a surprise. Rudy McCollum, an African-American city councilor also interested in the position of mayor, decided to back Kane after a private meeting between the two, clearing the way for Kane to win election. Previous mayors had treated the role as primarily a ceremonial one, with the city manager effectively operating the city. Kane treated the office as a full-time job, taking a more hands-on role. As mayor, Kane used a sale leaseback arrangement to obtain funds to renovate the historic Maggie L. Walker High School and reopen it in 2000 as a magnet governor's school, the Maggie L. Walker Governor's School for Government and International Studies, which now serves the top students in Central Virginia. Three elementary schools and one middle school were also built in Richmond under Kane. Along with Commonwealth's attorney David Hicks, U.S. Attorney James Comey, and Police Chief Jerry Oliver, Kane was a supporter of Project Exile, a «controversial but effective program» that shifted gun crimes to federal court, where armed defendants faced harsher sentences. The effort won broad political support, and the city's homicide rate fell by 55% over Kane's tenure in office. Kane later touted Project Exile during his campaign for lieutenant governor in 2001. On several occasions, Kane voted in opposition to tax increases and supported a tax abatement program for renovated buildings, which was credited for a housing renovation boom in the city. Richmond was named one of the 10 best cities in America to do business. By Forbes magazine during Kane's term, according to John Moser, a professor emeritus of urban studies and planning at Virginia Commonwealth University and later a visiting fellow at the University of Richmond's Center for Civic Engagement, during his time as Mayor Kane, "...was energetic, charismatic and, most important, spoke openly about his commitment to racial reconciliation in Richmond." The New York Times wrote that Kane, "...was by all accounts instrumental in bridging the city's racial divide." In the early part of his term, Kane issued an apology for the city's role in slavery. The apology was generally well received as a genuine, heartfelt expression. In the latter part of his term, a contentious debate took place in the city over the inclusion of a portrait of Confederate General Robert E. Lee in a set of historic murals to be placed on city floodwalls. Many African Americans were outraged that Lee would appear on city walls, while Southern heritage groups demanded that Lee's picture remain. Kane proposed a compromise in which Lee would appear as part of a series of murals that also included figures like Abraham Lincoln and Powhatan Beatty. Kane's stance drew criticism from the NAACP. Kane argued that placing Lee on the floodwall made sense in context, and that, Much of our history is not pleasant, you can't whitewash it. Kane's compromise proposal passed the council on a 6 to 3 vote. During his tenure as mayor, Kane drew criticism for spending $6,000 in public funds on buses to the Million Mom March, an anti gun violence rally in Washington, D.C. After a backlash, Kane raised the money privately and reimbursed the city. Lieutenant Governor of Virginia 2002 Kane ran for lieutenant governor of Virginia in 2001. Kane joined the race after state senator Emily Couric dropped out due to pancreatic cancer and endorsed Kane as her replacement. In the Democratic primary election, Kane ran against state delegate Alan A. Diamonstein of Newport News, and state delegate Gerald C. Jones of Norfolk. 
Kane won the nomination, garnering 39.7% of the vote to Diamonstein's 31.4% and Jones' 28.9%. In the general election, Kane won with 925,974 votes, 50.35% of the vote, edging out his Republican opponent, State Delegate Jay Katzen, who received 883,886 votes, 48.06%. Libertarian Gary Reams received 28,783 votes. Kane was inaugurated on January 12, 2002, and was sworn in by his wife Ann Holton, a state judge. <laughs> 2005 gubernatorial election In 2005, Kane ran for governor of Virginia against Republican candidate Jerry W. Kilgore, a former state attorney general. Kane was considered an underdog for most of the race, trailing in polls for most of the election. Two polls released in September 2005 showed Kane trailing Kilgore by four percentage points in a Washington Post poll and by one percentage point in a Mason Dixon Roanoke Times poll. The final opinion polls of the race before the November election showed Kane slightly edging ahead of Kilgore. Kane ultimately prevailed, winning 1,025,942 votes (51.7%) to Kilgore's 912,327 (46.0%). A third candidate, Independent State Senator H. Russell Potts Jr., who ran as an Independent Republican received 43,953 votes Kane emphasized fiscal responsibility and a centrist message. He expressed support for controlling sprawl and tackling long-standing traffic issues, an issue that resonated in the exurbs of Northern Virginia. He benefited from his association with the popular outgoing Democratic governor, Mark Warner, who had performed well in traditionally Republican areas of the state. On the campaign trail, Kane referred to the Warner Kane administration in speeches and received the strong backing of Warner. Kilgore later attributed his defeat to Warner's high popularity and the plummeting popularity of Republican President George W. Bush, who held one rally with Kilgore on the campaign's final day. The campaign turned sharply negative in its final weeks, with Kilgore running television attack ads that claimed, incorrectly, that Kane believed that, Hitler doesn't qualify for the death penalty. The ads also attacked Kane for his service ten years earlier as a court-appointed attorney for a death row inmate. The Republican ad was denounced by the editorial boards of The Washington Post and a number of Virginia newspapers as a «smear» and «dishonest». Kane responded with an ad, «in which he told voters that he opposes capital punishment but would take an oath and enforce the death penalty». In later polls, voters said they believed Kane's response and were angered by Kilgore's negative ads. In the election, Kane won by large margins in the Democratic strongholds such as Richmond and Northern Virginia's inner suburbs, such as Alexandria and Arlington, as well as in the Democratic trending Fairfax County. Kane also won Republican-leaning areas in Northern Virginia's outer suburbs, including Prince William County and Loudoun County, where George W. Bush had beat John Kerry in the previous year's presidential election, and performed, "...surprisingly well in Republican strongholds like Virginia Beach and Chesapeake." Kane also defeated Kilgore in the burgeoning Richmond suburbs. Kilgore led in southwest Virginia and in the Shenandoah Valley. 2006 to Governor of Virginia Kane was sworn in as governor at the colonial capital at Williamsburg, on January 14, 2006, the first governor since Thomas Jefferson to be inaugurated there. Kane was chairman of the Southern Governors Association from 2008 to 2009. Democratic response to State of the Union Address On January 31, 2006, Kane gave the Democratic response to President George W. Bush's 2006 State of the Union Address. In it, Kane criticized the Bush administration's No Child Left Behind Act for "...wreaking havoc on local school districts," criticized congressional Republicans for cutting student loan programs, and condemned as "...reckless." Bush's spending increases and tax cuts. 
Kane praised bipartisan initiatives in Virginia, "...to make record investments in education," and to improve veterans' access to veterans' benefits. Kane criticized the Bush administration's conduct of the Iraq War and treatment of U.S. soldiers, saying that, "...the American people were given inaccurate information about reasons for invading Iraq." Our troops in Iraq were not given the best body armor or the best intelligence." And the administration wants to further reduce military and veterans' benefits. <laughs> Energy, the environment, and conservation As governor, Kane successfully protected 400,000 acres 1, square kilometers of Virginia land from development, fulfilling a promise that he made in 2005. Kane's conservation efforts focused on conservation easements voluntary easements that preserve the private ownership of a piece of land while also permanently protecting it from development. A substantial Virginia land preservation tax credit encouraged easements. From 2004 to 2009, the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, a quasi-governmental entity set up in 1966 to preserve open land in the state, protected more land than it had in the previous 40 years. A fact touted by Kane as his term drew to a close. As governor, Kane established the Climate Change Commission, a bipartisan panel to study climate change issues. The panel was shuttered under Kane's Republican successor, Governor Robert F. McDonnell, but was revived as the Governor's Climate Change and Resiliency Update Commission under McDonnell's successor, Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe. In 2008, Kane supported a coal fired power plant project in Wise County, clashing with environmentalists who opposed the project. In 2009, Kane expressed support for tighter restrictions on mountaintop removal coal mining imposed by the Obama administration. Healthcare and public health In October 2006, Kane signed an executive order banning smoking in all government buildings and state-owned cars as of January 1, 2007. He signed legislation banning smoking in restaurants and bars, with some exceptions, in March 2009, making Virginia the first Southern state to do so. In 2007, the Republican-controlled Virginia General Assembly passed legislation with overwhelming bipartisan support to require girls to receive the HPV vaccine which immunizes recipients against a virus that causes cervical cancer before entering high school kane expressed some qualms about the legislation and pushed for a strong opt out provision ultimately signing a bill that included a provision allowing parents to opt out of the requirement without citing a reason in 2007 kane secured increases in state funding for nursing in the virginia general assembly and announced a 10% salary increase for nursing faculty above the normal salary increase for state employees plus additional funds for scholarships for nursing masters programs the initiatives were aimed at addressing a shortage of practicing nurses Virginia Tech shooting Following the 2007 Virginia Tech shooting, in which 32 people were killed by Sung Wei Cho, Kane appointed an eight-member Virginia Tech Review Panel, chaired by retired Virginia State Police Superintendent W. Gerald Massengill, to probe the event. The commission members included specialists in psychology, law, forensics and higher education as well as former Secretary of Homeland Security Tom Ridge. The commission first met in May 2007, and issued its findings and recommendations in August 2007. Among other recommendations, the panel proposed many mental health reforms. Based on the panel's recommendations, Kane proposed $42 million of investment in mental health programs and reforms, included boosting access to outpatient and emergency mental health services, increasing the number of case managers, and improving monitoring of community based providers. In April 2007, Kane signed an executive order instructing state agencies to step up efforts to block gun sales to people involuntarily committed to inpatient and outpatient mental health treatment centers. Kane, who had been in Japan on a trade mission at the time of the shootings, received widespread praise for his quick return to the state and his handling of the issue. Budget and economy 
Among Kane's greatest challenges as governor came during the 2008–09 economic crisis, the Washington Post wrote that, "...perhaps his greatest success was keeping the state running despite the crisis." In the midst of the Great Recession, unemployment in Virginia remained lower than the national average. During Kane's tenure as governor, the unemployment rate in Virginia rose from 3.2% to 7.4%, a smaller increase than the national unemployment rate which rose from 4.7% to 9.9% during the same period. As governor, Kane approved about $3.31 billion in general fund spending cuts, and after the end of Kane's term in office, the Virginia General Assembly adopted about $1.33 billion in additional budget cuts that Kane had recommended for a total of $4.64 billion in cuts. The Washington Post noted, "...unable to raise taxes and required by law to balance the budget, he was forced to make unpopular cuts that led to such things as shuttered highway rest stops and higher public university tuition." Virginia was one of three states to earn the highest grade in terms of management in a report by the nonpartisan Pew Center on the states. Virginia took first place each year from 2006 to 2009 in the "'Best States for Business' rankings published by Forbes magazine. Infrastructure and transportation In July 2007, during the debate on the Silver Line of the Washington Metro through Tyson's Corner, Kane supported an elevated track solution in preference to a tunnel, citing costs and potential delays that would put federal funding at risk. In 2006, early in his term, Kane pressed the General Assembly to support a legislative package to ease severe traffic congestion by spending about $1 billion annually for highway construction, repairs to aging roads, mass transit, and other transportation projects. The money would raised through increases in taxes and fees that would have raised an estimated $4 billion in revenue over four years. The Democratic-controlled Senate supported the plan, but the Republican-controlled House was ultimately unwilling to approve the taxes necessary to carry out the project, however, and the effort failed even after a special session of the legislature was called over the transportation funding stalemate. In 2007, Republicans in the General Assembly passed their own transportation funding bill. Rather than a statewide tax increase to finance the transportation improvements, as Kane and most legislative Democrats favored, the Republican bill called for transportation funding to come from borrowing $2.5 billion and paying the debt costs out of the general fund. Authorized local tax increase in Northern Virginia, increased fees and taxes on rental cars, commercial real estate, and hotels, and increased traffic infraction fines and driver's licenses fees. Kane and most legislative Democrats opposed the Republican legislation, stating that it was inadequate to address traffic congestion and that the withdrawal of funds from the general fund would affect core services such as health care, law enforcement, and education. Kane ultimately signed a bill with amendments reflecting concerns by local government officials and a bipartisan group of lawmakers who were concerned that the plan took too much money from the state's general fund. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. Under Kane, participation in Virginia in early childhood education increased by 40.2% due to the Kane's expansion of the Virginia Preschool Initiative, which makes pre-kindergarten more accessible to four-year-olds from households close to the poverty line. Kane sought increases to the budget for preschool programs every year during his term as governor. Virginia was rated as the best state to raise a child in a 2007 report by Education Week and the Pew Center on the States. Topic: Cabinet and appointments. Kane made the following appointments to his Virginia governor's cabinet: Chief of Staff, William Leedy, 2006–2007; Wayne Turnage, 2007–2010; Secretary of Administration, Viola Baskerville, 2006–2010; Virginia Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, Robert Bloxham, 2006–2010. Secretary of Commerce and Trade, Patrick Gotchik, 2006 to 2010. Secretary of the Commonwealth, Catherine Hanley, 2006 to 2010. Secretary of Education, Thomas R. Morris, 2006 to 2010. 
Secretary of Finance, Jody Wagner, 2006 to 2008; Rick Brown, 2008 to 2010. Secretary of Health and Human Resources, Marilyn Tavener, 2006 to 2010. Secretary of Natural Resources, Preston Bryant, 2006 to 2010. Secretary of Public Safety, John W. Marshall, 2006 to 2010. Secretary of Technology, Anish Chopra, 2006 to 2009; Leonard Pamata, 2009–2010. Secretary of Transportation, Pierce Homer, 2006 to 2010. Counselor to the Governor, Lawrence Roberts, 2006 to 2009. Counselor to the Governor, Mark Rubin, 2009–2010. Assistant for Commonwealth Preparedness, Robert P. Crouch, 2006 to 2010. Senior Advisor for Workforce Daniel G LeBlanc 2006 to 2010 as governor Kane made a number of appointments to the Virginia state courts Kane made two appointments to the Supreme Court of Virginia naming Chesapeake Circuit Judge S Bernard Goodwin to the court in 2007 and Virginia Court of Appeals Judge Leroy F Millet Jr to the court in 2008 on September 27 2007 just weeks after appointing ESAM Omish to the 20 member Virginia Commission on Immigration Kane learned that Omish had made videos accusing Israel of genocide and calling for the impeachment of President Bush Kane immediately requested and received Omish's resignation and said that background checks would be more thorough in the future. Topic: 2008 vice presidential speculation. Kane announced his support for Senator Obama's presidential bid in February 2007. It was maintained that Kane's endorsement was the first from a statewide elected official outside of Illinois. Because Kane was a relatively popular governor of a southern state, there was media speculation that he was a potential nominee for vice president. Obama had supported Kane in his campaign for governor and had said about him, "...Tim Kane has a message of fiscal responsibility and generosity of spirit. That kind of message can sell anywhere." On July 28, 2008, Politico reported that Kane was very, very high on Obama's shortlist for vice president, a list which also included then Senator Hillary Clinton of New York, Governor Kathleen Sebelius of Kansas, Senator Evan Bayh of Indiana, and Senator Joe Biden of Delaware. Obama ultimately selected Biden to become the vice presidential nominee. Topic. Democratic National Committee Chair 2009 to 2011 In January 2009, Kane became chair of the Democratic National Committee. Kane had turned down the position the first time it was offered to him, expressing misgivings about accepting a partisan position, but nonetheless took the job at the request of President Obama. He took on the position as chair part-time as he continued his term as governor of Virginia. Kane's main goals as DNC chair were protecting the party's seats in Congress during the 2010 midterms and integrating the president's campaign apparatus, organizing for America, and its technological acumen into the party machinery. In the 2010 midterms, the DNC under Kane's leadership outraised the Republican National Committee (RNC) by some 30 million dollars. Nevertheless, Democrats lost control of the House and lost seats in the Senate amidst a Tea Party backlash. Kane was largely not blamed for the losses. Kane kept a low profile in the position in comparison to his counterpart, RNC Chairman Michael Steele. Kane focused more on fundraising and maintaining party unity than on attacking political opponents. In February 2011, after Kane spoke to union leaders in Madison, Organizing for America got involved in Wisconsin's budget battle and opposed Republican sponsored anti union legislation. They made phone calls, sent emails, and distributed messages via Facebook and Twitter to build crowds for rallies. After completing his term as governor in January 2010, Kane taught part time at the University of Richmond, teaching a course in spring 2010 at the Jepson School of Leadership Studies and another in fall 2010 at the University of Richmond School of Law. Kane explained that he had chosen to teach at a private university, rather than a public university, because it would not have been right for a sitting governor to be seeking employment at an institution when he writes the budget and appoints the board of the institution. Topic: 
United States Senate Topic 2012 election After Senator Jim Webb's decision not to seek re-election, Kane announced on April 5, 2011, that he would run for Webb's seat. He was initially reluctant to return to public office, but Webb, Senator Mark Warner, and other Virginia Democrats saw Kane as the strongest potential Democratic candidate and convinced him to run. Kane named Lawrence Roberts as his campaign chairman. Mike Henry was chosen as Kane's campaign manager. Kane filmed announcement videos in English and Spanish and was unopposed for the Democratic nomination. He defeated former Senator and Governor George Allen in the general election. 10 year Kane was sworn in for a six year term on January 3, 2013, reuniting him with Mark Warner, the senior senator. Kane was lieutenant governor when Warner was governor of Virginia. On June 11, 2013, Kane delivered a speech on the Senate floor in support of the bipartisan Gang of Eight immigration bill. The speech was entirely in Spanish, marking the first time a senator had ever made a speech on the Senate floor in a language other than English. As a member of the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, Kane pushed for a new congressional authorization of military force for the American operations against Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL. Kane supported the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with Iran, though he also helped Republican Senator Bob Corker hold a vote on a resolution of disapproval on the deal. Kane has taken several trips throughout the Middle East, meeting with the leaders of states such as Turkey and Israel. While in the Senate, Kane has continued to teach part time at the University of Richmond, receiving a salary of $16,000 per year. Kane voted with his party more than 90% of the time. According to The Washington Post, Kane has crafted a largely progressive record as a senator. He reportedly has good relations with both Democratic and Republican senators. During the 2016 vice presidential campaign, Kane frequently criticized Donald Trump, saying that Trump, as commander in chief, scares me to death, and had a bizarre fascination with strongmen and authoritarian leaders. In 2017, after Trump took office, Kane continued to criticize the new president's authoritarian tendencies citing his attacks on media, judges, and peaceful protesters. At an event at George Mason University, Kane said that with Trump in office, Americans are in a «living experiment» to see whether or not the Constitution still works to check executive power. In February 2017, Kane met with Pope Francis at a general audience at the Vatican. Kane also met with the Jesuit Refugee Service to discuss refugees and met with Vatican officials to discuss Latin American issues. The same month, Kane delivered an address on the Truman Doctrine at 70 at London's Chatham House. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Committee assignments and caucuses. In the 113th Congress (2013–15), Kane was on the Committee on Armed Services, the Committee on the Budget, and the Committee on Foreign Relations. In the 114th Congress, Kane was on the same three committees, plus the Special Committee on Aging. In July 2013, Kane was named Chairman of the United States Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia, and Counter Terrorism. Within the Senate Armed Services Committee, Kane is a member of the Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities, the Subcommittee on Readiness and Management Support, for which he is the ranking member, and the Subcommittee on Sea Power. Within the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee, Kane is a member of the Subcommittee on State Department and USAID Management, International Operations, and Bilateral International. National Development for which he is the ranking member, the Subcommittee on Europe and Regional Security Cooperation, the Subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia, and Counter-Terrorism, and the Subcommittee on Western Hemisphere, Transnational Crime, Civilian Security, Democracy, Human Rights and Global Women's Issues. In January 2014, Kane, with Republican Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, established the Bipartisan Senate Career and Technical Education Caucus CTE Caucus, which focuses on vocational Educational education and technical education. Kane and Portman co chair the caucus. 
In 2014, Kane and Portman introduced the CTE Excellence and Equity Act to the Senate. The legislation would provide $500 million in federal funding, distributed by competitive grants, to high schools to further CTE programs. The legislation, introduced as an amendment to the Omnibus Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Act of 2006, would promote apprenticeships and similar initiatives. Kane and Portman introduced similar legislation, the Educating Tomorrow's Workforce Act, in 2017. Topic: 2016 Vice Presidential Campaign. Kane endorsed Hillary Clinton's presidential bid in 2016 and campaigned actively for Clinton in seven states during the primaries. He had been the subject of considerable speculation as a possible running mate for Clinton, with several news reports indicating that he was at or near the top of Clinton's list of people under consideration alongside figures such as Elizabeth Warren and Julian Castro. The New York Times reported that Clinton's husband, former President Bill Clinton, privately backed Kane as his wife's vice presidential selection, noting his domestic and national security resume. On July 22, 2016, she announced Kane would be her running mate in the election. Clinton introduced Kane as her choice in a joint appearance at a rally at Florida International University in Miami the following day. The 2016 Democratic National Convention nominated him their vice presidential candidate on July 27, 2016. Kane was the first Virginian since Woodrow Wilson to be on a major party's ticket, and was the first Virginian to run for vice president on a major party's ticket since John Tyler in 1840. He was also the first senator or former senator from Virginia to be on a major party's ticket since Tyler, in accordance with long standing political custom in the U.S. Upon being nominated for vice president, Kane publicly released his full tax returns for the last ten years. Kane also publicly released medical records, his physician, Dr. Brian P. Monaghan, the attending physician of the United States Congress, wrote in a letter that Kane was, "...in overall excellent health." In September he published a campaign book co-authored with Clinton, Stronger Together. In Kane's preparations for the vice presidential debate in October 2016, lawyer Robert Barnett played the role of Republican vice presidential candidate Mike Pence. During Pence's own debate preparations, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker played the role of Kane. Pence was criticized after the debate for not defending Donald Trump's comments, while Kane was criticized for being too aggressive and interrupting. According to ABC News, Kane interrupted 70 times throughout the debate, while Pence interrupted 40 times. Despite winning a plurality of the national popular vote, the Clinton Kane ticket lost the Electoral College, and thus the election, to the Trump Pence ticket on November 8, 2016. This is the only election that Kane has ever lost. Clinton Kane did win Virginia, the only Southern state to vote for the Democratic ticket, a victory attributed in part to Kane. Topic: 2018 election. After the 2016 election, Kane said that he would run for re-election to the Senate in 2018. He expressed his desire to emulate John Warner, who represented Virginia in the Senate for 30 years. He added that he would not run for president or vice president in the future. In his 2018 Senate campaign against Republican nominee and Trump ally Corey Stewart, Kane had the endorsement of the Richmond Times Dispatch, marking the first time in decades the paper had endorsed a Democrat. After taking an early lead in his race against Stewart, Kane worked to support other Democrats who, in seven districts, were challenging incumbent Republicans for House seats. On Election Day, Kane defeated Stewart by more than a 15 point margin. Personality and leadership style About 145,000 emails from Kane and his staff during his term as governor are publicly accessible from the Library of Virginia. Politico conducted an analysis of the correspondence and wrote that the messages show Kane to be a media savvy and detail oriented micromanager who is also a policy wonk. According to The New York Times, Kane is widely described by people in his political orbit as a likable if less than charismatic figure guided by moral convictions that flow from his deep Christian faith." Kane described himself on Meet the Press as boring. <laughs> 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 
Political positions In terms of political ideology, 538 gives Kane an average score of minus 37 minus 100 is the most liberal, and 100 is the most conservative. 538 characterizes him as a «mainstream Democrat» and notes that his ideology score is very similar to that of Vice President Joe Biden. Three conservative groups, the American Conservative Union, the Club for Growth, and Heritage Action gave Kane 0% ratings in the few years before 2016, while the liberal group Americans for Democratic Action gave Kane a 90% rating in 2014. The New York Times wrote that, In hyperpartisan Washington, he is often seen as a centrist, while also describing him as an old fashioned liberal driven by Jesuit ideals. Abortion, birth control, and sex education Kane, a Roman Catholic, is personally against abortion, but is "...largely inclined to keep the law out of women's reproductive decisions." Kane has said, "...I'm a strong supporter of Roe v. Wade and women being able to make these decisions. In government, we have enough things to worry about. We don't need to make people's reproductive decisions for them." Kane supports some legal restrictions on abortion, such as requiring parental consent for minors with a judicial bypass procedure and banning late-term abortions in cases where the woman's life is not at risk. In 2009, Kane signed a bill to create a Choose Life license plate among the more than 200 Virginia specialty plates already offered, the proceeds of which would partly go to Heartbeat International, a Christian organization that operates anti-abortion crisis pregnancy centers. Planned Parenthood and NARAL Pro-Choice America expressed disappointment in Kane's decision. Kane considered such license plate messages a matter of free speech and added that the move was, "...in keeping with the Commonwealth's long-time practice of approving specialty plates with all manner of political and social messages." Kane previously criticized the Obama administration for, "...not providing a broad enough religious employer exemption." in the contraceptive mandate of the Affordable Care Act, but praised a 2012 amendment to the regulations that required insurers to provide birth control to employees when an employer was an objecting religious organization. In 2005, when running for governor, Cain said he favored reducing abortions by, one, "...enforcing the current Virginia restrictions on abortion and passing an enforceable ban on partial birth abortion that protects the life and health of the mother." Two, fighting teen pregnancy through abstinence-focused education", 3. ensuring women's access to health care including legal contraception and economic opportunity", and 4. promoting adoption as an alternative for women facing unwanted pregnancies. In 2007, as governor, Kane cut off state funding for abstinence-only sex education programs, citing studies which showed that such programs were ineffective, while comprehensive sex education programs were more effective. Kane believes that both abstinence and contraceptives must be taught, and that education should be evidence-based. As a senator, he has received perfect scores from Planned Parenthood and the abortion rights advocacy group NARAL. He has received a score of zero from the Anti-Abortion National Right to Life Committee. Campaign finance Kane «strongly disagrees» with the ruling in Citizens United v. FEC 2010. In 2015, Kane joined a group of Senate Democrats in a letter to Securities and Exchange Commission Chairwoman Mary Jo White that said the ruling, "...reversed long-standing precedent and has moved our country in a different and disturbing direction when it comes to corporate influence in politics." They urged the SEC to require publicly traded companies to disclose political spending to their shareholders to "...increase transparency in the U.S. political process." following the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Citizens United. Capital punishment Cain personally opposes capital punishment, but presided over eleven executions while governor. Cain said, "...I really struggled with capital punishment as governor. I have a moral position against the death penalty. But I took an oath of office to uphold it." 
"...following an oath of office is also a moral obligation." During his time in office he commuted one death sentence in June 2008, that of Percy Lever Walton to life imprisonment without parole on grounds of mental incompetence, writing that, "...one cannot reasonably conclude that Walton is fully aware of the punishment he is about to suffer and why he is to suffer it," and thus executing him would be unconstitutional. Kane vetoed a number of bills to expand the death sentence to more crimes, saying, I do not believe that further expansion of the death penalty is necessary to protect human life or provide for public safety needs." Some of the vetoes were overridden, while others were sustained. <inaudible> <inaudible> environment, energy, and climate change Kane acknowledges the scientific consensus on climate change, and in a 2014 Senate speech criticized climate change deniers, as well as those who "...may not deny the climate science, but deny that the U.S. can or should be a leader in taking any steps." To address the issue, Kane has expressed concern about sea level rise a major consequence of climate change, and in particular its effect on coastal Virginia. In 2014, he partnered with two Virginia Republicans U.S. Representatives Rob Whitman and Scott Riggle to hold a conference on sea level rise and local adaptation efforts to protect military installations in the Hampton Roads area. Kane endorses making coal energy production cleaner, saying that it is imperative to convert coal to electricity with less pollution than we do today. He has criticized those who frame the debate as a conflict between an economy and the environment", saying that, "...protecting the environment is good for the economy." Kane co-sponsored the Advanced Clean Coal Technology Investment in Our Nation Act, legislation to increase investment in clean coal technologies. He voted against passage of legislation to approve the Keystone XL pipeline. Kane supports the use of hydraulic fracturing fracking to harvest natural gas from shale formations. He believes this will reduce carbon pollution. Kane voted against an amendment, introduced by Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, that would have repealed a provision in the Energy Policy Act of 2005 that exempts hydraulic fracturing from the underground injection control provisions of the Safe Drinking Water Act. As a result, regulation of hydraulic fracturing remains in the hands of state agencies. The US EPA cannot regulate hydraulic fracturing nor require a federal permit. Kane supports exporting liquefied natural gas (LNG) to other countries, like his fellow senator from Virginia, Mark Warner. Kane applauded the US Forest Service's plan to close most, but not all, of the George Washington National Forest to hydraulic fracturing and other horizontal drilling activities. In 2013, Kane supported oil and gas exploration off the coast of Virginia, saying, I have long believed that the moratorium on offshore drilling, based on a cost-benefit calculation performed decades ago, should be re-examined." In April 2015, Kane reiterated his opposition to the moratorium on offshore drilling. In March 2016, Kane signaled that his position was softening, saying he was particularly struck by the material objections of the Department of Defense to the incompatibility of drilling with naval operations off Virginia's coast. I have participated in this debate for over a decade as a governor and member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. The DoD has been relatively quiet during this public debate and has never shared their objections with me before." By August 2016, Kane stated his support for a ban on offshore drilling, bringing his position in line with that of Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration. Kane supports the development of solar energy and offshore wind turbines. Based on his votes on environmental issues in the Senate, the League of Conservation Voters has given Kane a 95% score for 2018, and a 94% lifetime score. At the time of his 2016 vice presidential campaign, Kane had an 88% score for 2015, and a 91% lifetime score. <laughs> <laughs> Financial regulation Kane has said that he is strongly for the regulation of the financial industry, and he supports the Dodd Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. In July 2016, Kane signed a bipartisan letter that 
urged the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to carefully tailor its rulemaking under Dodd Frank regarding community banks and credit unions so as not to unduly burden these institutions with regulations aimed at commercial banks. The letter prompted criticism from progressives who viewed it as anti-regulation. Charles Chamberlain, executive director of Democracy for America, called the letter a lobbyist-driven effort to help banks dodge consumer protection standards and regulations designed to prevent banks from destroying our economy." Kane responded to the criticism by saying, "...it's important you don't treat every financial institution the same. It wasn't credit unions that tanked the economy, it wasn't local community banks that tanked the economy, generally wasn't regional banks that did things that tanked the economy." Kane also signed a letter urging that a requirement that regional banks report liquidity levels on a daily basis be loosened. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Foreign and Defense Policy. In the Senate, Kane has supported the normalization of US-Cuban relations and the international nuclear agreement with Iran. Kane expressed support for Israel's right to defend itself during the 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict. Kane also supported the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. Topic: <laughs> Grand Strategy and Democracy Promotion. After the 2016 presidential campaign, Kane wrote an extensive essay in Foreign Affairs outlining his underlying foreign policy philosophy. According to Kane, American foreign policy has suffered a lack of direction since the 1990s because the end of the Cold War rendered irrelevant America's previous grand strategy, which Kane identifies as the Truman Doctrine. This lack of grand strategy makes American actions seem random, complicating the policy-making process and hindering efforts by American leaders to convince the general public that American foreign policy is worthwhile. To remedy this, Kane proposes a new grand strategy based mainly on democracy promotion. Kane's grand strategy is informed by a tri-polar balance of international power, with one pole being democratic states including the United States and its allies, the second being autocratic powers led by Russia and China, and the third being non-state actors multinational corporations, NGOs, gangs, etc. First, Kane believes that the United States should work to support democracy in already democratic countries, as democracy globally has been declining for many years. To maintain democracy in democratic countries, Kane proposes the creation of an intergovernmental organization consisting of all the world's democracies in which states can cooperate on solutions to problems such as corruption and voter inclusion. He compares this hypothetical group to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, in which advanced industrialized countries collaborate on economic policy. Kane believes that this new organization will help democracies remain democratic, as well as promoting democracy in other countries by providing those countries viable democratic examples for them to emulate. In this way, Kane says that the United States should no longer see itself as the indispensable nation, but rather the exemplary democracy. Second, Kane proposes that democracies should coordinate to best interact with authoritarian states. Depending on the circumstances, democracies should either confront, compete, or cooperate with autocracies. For example, Kane observes that the United States competes with its authoritarian adversaries by strengthening military and commercial alliances, and it confronts them by decrying their human rights records. Finally, Kane believes that democracies and autocracies should cooperate when they have the same interests, such as combating climate change. In July 2017, Kane expanded on the grand strategy proposed in this essay in an interview at the Brookings Institution with international relations scholar Robert Kagan. Topic: Afghanistan. On the issue of the war in Afghanistan, Kane's website states the main mission in Afghanistan, destroying Al Qaeda, is nearly complete and we should bring our troops home as quickly as we can, consistent with the need to make sure that Afghanistan poses no danger in the broader region. <laughs> Latin America Kane believes that American foreign policy has neglected relations with Latin America, saying, 
We have seldom paid enough attention to the Americas, in particular, and when we have whether through the Monroe Doctrine or by battling communist movements during the Cold War we have focused more on blocking outsiders from building influence in the Western Hemisphere than we have on the nations already there. To remedy this, Kane has argued that the United States should focus more on this region. He has said, the United States needs an all Americas national security policy that places primacy on North, Central, and South America. It should not be an Americas only policy, one that limits the United States' involvement with democracies elsewhere. But the United States should shift its focus. The 35 nations that make up the Americas share significant cultural similarities and boast a combined population of more than 1 billion. Topic: <laughs> War powers. Kane is known for expertise on the constitutional powers of the presidency and has said that war powers questions are a personal obsession of his he has stressed that under the constitution congress has the power to declare war and only congress kane has termed us missile strikes against the syrian government in 2018 ordered by trump as illegal because they were undertaken without congressional approval kane and republican senator john mccain of arizona introduced the war powers consultation act of 2014 which would replace the war powers act of 1973 bringing the congress back into decisions on the deployment of us military forces the bill would establish a Congressional Consultation Committee, with which the President would be required to consult regularly regarding significant foreign policy matters, before ordering the deployment of the armed forces into a significant armed conflict, and at least every two months for the duration of any significant armed conflict. Kane argued for the bill by citing his «frustration» over the sloppiness of «process and communication over decisions of war», noting that Presidents tend to overreach and Congress sometimes willingly ducks tough votes and decisions. We all have to do better." In February 2018, Kane was one of 18 senators to sign a letter to President Trump arguing that striking North Korea with a preventative or preemptive U.S. military strike would lack either a constitutional basis or legal authority without congressional approval. Syria, Iraq, and ISIL In 2014, Kane argued that the U.S. military intervention against Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL, undertaken by President Obama, was unconstitutional without a new congressional authorization for the use of military force against ISIL. In November 2014, at the Halifax International Security Forum, Kane, together with Senator John McCain, emphasized the necessity of such a congressional authorization, saying, "...you just can't have a war without Congress. You can't ask people to risk their lives, risk getting killed, seeing other folks getting killed or injured if Congress isn't willing to do the job to put their thumbprint on this and say, this is a national mission and worth it." After the April 2017 Shayrat missile strike in Syria, ordered by President Donald Trump, Kane said, "...there is no legal justification for this. He should not have done this without coming to Congress." On Meet the Press, Kane stated, "...I'm a strong supporter that the U.S. should take action to protect humanitarian causes, like the ban on chemical weapons." Where I differ from this administration, and I took the same position with respect to President Obama, we are a nation that's not supposed to take military action, start war, without a plan that's presented to and approved by Congress." On December 11, 2014, after a five-month campaign by Kane, the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee approved by 10 to 8 straight party lines a measure authorizing military force against ISIL, but barring the use of ground troops. In 2015, Kane criticized Obama's approach to the Syrian civil war, saying that the establishment of humanitarian no-fly zones would have alleviated the humanitarian crisis in Syria. Topic: <inaudible> Firearms. <inaudible> Kane is a firearms owner. He has supported expanded background checks for weapons purchases as well as restrictions on the sale of combat-style weapons and high-capacity magazines." As governor, Kane oversaw the closing of loopholes in Virginia law that allowed some who had failed background checks to purchase guns. 
In the Senate, Kane has supported legislation which would require background checks to be performed for weapons sold via gun shows and via the Internet. He also supports legislation to bar weapons sales to suspected terrorists on the no fly list. Kane has a 100% rating from the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence and an F rating from the NRA. <laughs> Health care Kane supported passage of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act of 2009, Obamacare, saying in 2012, I was a supporter and remain a supporter of the Affordable Care Act. I felt like it was a statement that we were going to put some things in the rear view mirror. In 2013, Kane said that he agreed that changes to the ACA should be debated, but criticized Republicans for wrapping them up with the threat of a federal government shutdown, as part of a group of Democrats proposing more incremental steps to broaden health care coverage, as opposed to Bernie Sanders's push of Medicare for all. Senator Tim Kaine and Michael Bennett have proposed Medicare X. Medicare X would create a public option modeled after Medicare alongside private options on the Obamacare marketplaces. Immigration Kane supports President Obama's Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals and Deferred Action for Parental Accountability programs, which would allow up to 5 million undocumented immigrants to gain deferral of deportation and authorization to legally work in the United States. Alongside fellow Virginia Senator Mark Warner and many other members of Congress, Kane signed on to an amicus brief in support of the program in the Supreme Court case of United States v. Texas. Kane also supports comprehensive immigration reform, which would allow persons illegally present in the U.S. to earn legal status by paying a fine and taxes. Topic: <laughs> LGBT rights. In 2006, Kane campaigned against an amendment to the Virginia State Constitution to ban same-sex marriage, and in March 2013, Kane announced his support of same-sex marriage. In the Senate, Kane co-sponsored the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which would bar employment discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. In 2005, Kane said, "No couples in Virginia can adopt other than a married couple. That's the right policy." In 2011, however, Kane shifted his position. In 2012, he stated that, "...there should be a license that would entitle a committed couple to the same rights as a married couple." During the 2016 presidential campaign, Kane noted that his position on same-sex marriage was, "...at odds with the current doctrine of the Church that I still attend." He predicted that the Roman Catholic Church would someday adopt his view. In response, two bishops heading the Doctrine and Marriage Committees of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops said that the Church's position, cannot change", and reaffirmed their opposition to same-sex marriage. Taxes Kane supports allowing the Bush tax cuts to expire for those with incomes above $500,000. In 2012, Kane supported raising the cap on income subject for the FICA Social Security payroll tax so that it covers a similar percentage of income as it did in the 1980s under President Reagan, which would greatly extend the solvency of the «Social Security» program." In the Senate, Kane has supported the Marketplace Fairness Act, which would allow states to require online retailers to collect sales taxes in the same manner as traditional brick and mortar retailers. Trade. Kane supported granting President Obama Trade Promotion Authority (TPA) or Fast Track to allow him to negotiate free trade agreements. Kane stated that the goal should be to negotiate deals that protect workers' rights, environmental standards, and intellectual property, while knocking down tariffs and other barriers that some countries erect to keep American products out. In July 2016, Kane said that the Trans-Pacific Partnership (TPP) agreement was an improvement of the status quo", in terms of it being an "...upgrade of labor standards environmental standards 
intellectual property protections, but maintained that he had not yet decided how to vote on final approval of the agreement, citing significant concerns over TPP's dispute resolution mechanism. Later that July, Kane said that he could not support the TPP in its current form. Kane has been a proponent of NAFTA. Topic: <laughs> Transportation and growth. Kane supports some smart growth style policies, which Kane calls a balanced approach to growth, to control sprawl and improve transportation. He favors a transportation policy that includes public transit, bicycles, and pedestrians. As governor, Kane pushed through a $100 million open space acquisition initiative. Under Kane, Amtrak service in Virginia was expanded. Kane also participated in a White House roundtable discussion on high-speed rail in 2009. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Workers' rights and gender equality. Kane is generally pro-union and has received a 96% lifetime Senate voting rating from the AFL-CIO, which praised his selection as vice presidential nominee. However, Kane supports Virginia's long-standing right to work law, which frees union non-members from any legal obligation to pay fees to a union that bargains collectively on their behalf. Kane supports the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which expands the cases in which worker can sue against gender pay discrimination. Following his selection by Clinton as a running mate in 2016, Kane was praised by the National Organization for Women. Kane favors an increase in the minimum wage. Electoral history Personal life In November 1984, Kane married Anne Bright Holton, the daughter of A. Linwood Holton, Jr., a Republican who served as the 61st Governor of Virginia from 1970 to 1974. The couple met while they were both students at Harvard Law School. Holton has been a judge for the Virginia Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court in Richmond. After serving as First Lady of Virginia during her husband's term, she was appointed by Governor Terry McAuliffe in January 2014 to be Virginia's Secretary of Education, and held that position until July 2016, when she stepped down after her husband was named as the Democratic vice presidential candidate. The couple has three children, Nat B. 1990, Linwood Michael Woody B. 1992, and Anella B. 1995. Nat, the eldest son, is a United States Marine. Kane and his wife have been congregants of the St. Elizabeth Catholic Church in Richmond, a mostly black congregation, for 30 years. He has played the harmonica for over 20 years, and often travels with several. Kane is fluent in Spanish as a result of his nine months in Honduras. During the 2016 campaign, Kane made history as the first member of a presidential ticket to deliver a speech in fluent Spanish. Awards and honors Kane has received the Humanitarian Award from the Virginia Center for Inclusive Communities, then the Virginia Region of the National Conference for Community and Justice 2000, the Virginia Council of Churches Faith in Action Award 2009, the University of Richmond School of Law's William Green Award for Professional Excellence 2012, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy's Congressional Award 2015, the Center for the National Interests Distinguished Service Award 2016, and he was made a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Isabel Bella the Catholic 2017 equals equals notes